We've just received the first ever images from a brand new X-ray telescope that's now in space. The telescope is called CRISM, with an X, and it's just released this wide view of a cluster of galaxies, and this image and spectrum of a supernova remnant. Let's talk about what these images are showing, and what this brand new space telescope is going to do for us. CRISM, or the X-ray Imaging and Spectroscopy Mission, is a telescope launched by the Japanese space agency JAXA, in partnership with NASA and the European space agency ESA. It's an X-ray telescope that was built largely to avoid a potential time period with no high-quality X-ray telescope in space. You see, there are plans to launch an incredible X-ray telescope called Athena in about 2035, but that's a pretty long way off. And with the instruments on board the current X-ray telescopes Chandra and XMM-Newton now well over 15 years old, there was a good risk of having no X-ray telescope in space for a pretty long period of time. There was a mission called Hitomi that launched in 2016, but it had a lot of problems and it broke apart less than two months into its planned three-year mission. CRISM is effectively a rebuilt replacement to Hitomi, although it got a few upgrades as well. If all goes well, CRISM will operate for at least three years too, although that may well get extended, as lots of these missions like this tend to do. CRISM launched on September 6th, 2023, and is now in a low Earth orbit, about 550 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. This is a similar orbit to that of the Hubble Space Telescope, but is very different to other recent telescopes like JWST and Euclid. They are orbiting a point in space about 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth. Since CRISM is focused on X-rays though, it can get away with being a bit closer to Earth than those others, which are focusing on infrared light and visible light. This means that even the heat of the Earth can be a huge problem for them, and can interfere with the images they're taking, so they need to go a lot further away to try and minimize the impact of that heat. X-rays are incredibly high energy, and that actually makes them really hard to observe. Their wavelengths are so short that they can blast straight through typical mirrors without reflecting at all. So X-ray telescopes need to be built differently. I actually have a whole video on this topic that I'll link up here and in the description of this video, but here is the quick version. X-ray telescopes can't use traditional mirror setups as the X-rays would pass straight through the mirror. Instead, X-ray telescopes use clever nests of mirror segments that are arranged at very shallow angles. Rather than reflecting the light, they just slightly deflect it, changing the path of the X-rays just enough to be able to focus that light onto the instruments at the end of the very long telescope shaft. In fact, CRISM has two identical mirror setups, one that directs X-rays onto the main imager called Xtend, and one that directs photons into an instrument called an X-ray microcalorimeter. It's basically an instrument that can take spectra of the light it receives, and it's called Resolve. That brings us nicely to the first images from CRISM, and we'll start with the one from Resolve. It's the remnant of an exploded star called N132d in the Large Magellanic Cloud. That's a dwarf galaxy that orbits the Milky Way, so it's reasonably nearby. There's an image of the remnant put together from the data that was taken by Resolve 2, providing a map of the motion, distribution, and velocities of the gases present here. Along with the admittedly blurry image, we have the real juicy part here. This line is called a spectrum. CRISM is able to identify all the different energies of the X-rays it receives, and it can use this to identify specific chemical elements that are in the supernova remnant. It can do this because different elements emit very specific wavelengths or energies of light, and X-rays are just a type of light. Here, it can identify silicon, sulfur, iron, argon, and calcium. We see a spike in the spectrum, where there's more light being given out by these elements. And each spike corresponds to one of those elements, although each element can have multiple spikes. The spike to element thing is a long, long story, but just know that spikes equal elements. This grey line above is a spectrum from an older telescope called Suzaku, and the new CRISM one has 40 times better resolution in the energies shown here. You can see that some of the spikes are not present at all in the older spectrum, meaning that until now we just couldn't identify these elements as being present in the supernova remnant. The way that Resolve makes a spectrum is actually pretty cool. It doesn't break apart the light using a prism or grism like other spectrometers might. X-rays are just too hard for that. Instead, as each X-ray hits the Resolve detectors, they impart some of their energy onto the detectors and heat it up a tiny amount. 
Those rises in temperature change the conductive properties of the detector, and by analysing and disentangling these changes, Resolve can calculate the energy that each X-ray has. That's all the spectrum is, it's a plot of number of photons versus energy. CRISM is measuring what we call soft photons, which just means the slightly less energetic half of the X-ray range, and can detect X-rays up to 12,000 electron volts in energy. Electron volts are just a strange unit for measuring energy in, but again, that's a story for another video. In this wide image, we can also see the large Magellanic Cloud in which the remnant resides, as imaged by a ground-based optical telescope. You can see the remnant is pretty much invisible in visible light, but it's bright in the X-rays that CRISM is searching for. The other image we've seen from CRISM is enormous. It's taken by the Extend Imager, and it shows the X-ray emission of a cluster of galaxies called Abel 2319. This light is being emitted by incredibly hot gas between the galaxies, and in this picture it's been overlaid on some visible light data so that we can see those galaxies too. Many of the orange blobs in the visible light image are galaxies that are part of that cluster that CRISM is imaging here. The purple though is what CRISM saw. It's not taking images comparable to Hubble or JWST, but this is seriously impressive for an X-ray telescope. Due to the strange nature of these telescopes, which have those nests of deflecting mirrors, it's actually really difficult to focus images really nicely, or collect enough photons sometimes, meaning the resolution can sometimes be lower than you might expect. The uneven structure of the purple glow is likely to be a sign that the gas in the cluster is being stirred up and sloshed around on very large scales, probably by gravitational interactions with all of the galaxies in the cluster. Some of the shapes we can see in the gas likely come from the influence of an incredible supermassive black hole at the very centre of the cluster. It is hard to see individual galaxies in X-rays, but they're perfect for imaging gas or high energy emitters like quasars too. We can also see the shape of the four CCD detectors that make up the Extend Array, along with smaller pixel-like squares that make up each of those four detectors. This image was taken in one go by CRISM, and it's showing off its enormous field of view that's about a quarter of a square degree. That's larger than the full moon, and is really impressive, especially for an X-ray telescope. Again, I know square degrees are a weird unit that we use, but just know it's bigger than the full moon when we look at it on the sky. This large field of view is perfect for allowing CRISM to image extended celestial objects and their surroundings quickly. Its targets will include galaxy clusters, individual galaxies in the nearby universe, and even smaller objects, such as supernova remnants, like the one we've just seen. All in all, CRISM is working very well. These first images were just taken during the commissioning phase of the telescope's early weeks in space, and in February 2024, JAXA will start calibrating the instruments further and demonstrating their capabilities even more, ready for science targets to be imaged later in the year. Leave me any questions or thoughts you have in the comments below, and thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!